There's a block in West Seattle where they still invite the new neighbors over for dinner. The Vrablicks wanted to welcome the family that just moved in a few doors down. We are neighbors. Yeah, very close, very close. They're very close. nearby. Yeah. yeah. The kids retreat to the basement. <laughs> the grown-ups make small talk. They say, like, um, all the food is really delicious, and, like, it's very familiar to them. Moving trucks always attract neighbors' attention. And then the war started. But Bassam and yeah, Raba al Hamdan and their six kids showed up with just a few suitcases. Belongings don't matter so much anymore. They were, like, depressed and tired. They Exhausted. Not after what they've been through. Syria has been at war for close to five years. The country, if you can even call it that anymore, is a tangle of groups, including ISIS and government forces, which are all fighting for control. Russia recently entered the fray. As the violence grows, the humanitarian crisis deepens. They have like 80 olive trees. Wow. For the first wow. few years, the Alhamdans were relatively safe on their farm in the southern region of Dara, where Bassam worked for the government in the Ministry of Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> and they used to drink fresh milk from the cows. <laughs> but in January 2013, conditions worsened, as they explained in a recent interview with the help of a translator. Everything coming in and going out was controlled. They didn't have electricity, they didn't have bread. The security people would just come and take whoever they wanted to take. Like thousands of other Syrians, the Alhamdans grabbed what they could carry and headed for the border with Jordan, where they were herded into the sprawling Zatari camp, a crowded, dusty cluster of tents and temporary shelters on a barren stretch of desert. So it was tough because they are leaving behind their parents and all their family. They were making plans to settle elsewhere in Jordan when an accident made the situation much more urgent. The Alhamdan's teenage son Mohanad was electrocuted and nearly died. The family knew they had to leave. Right around then, someone from the UN called with a life-changing offer. If the Alhamdans could make it through more than a year of interviews, background checks, screenings and paperwork, they could come live in a place called Washington. They landed at SeaTac in November, and after bouncing between a few host families, they moved into a modest West Seattle apartment. They are very happy and they are very thankful because they have gotten lots of services. Many people are helping them here. Okay, class, go back to your seats. A few days a week, Bassam, Raba, and Mohanad head to nearby South Seattle College for English class. January. January. First one. They're starting with the very basics. One. When is your birthday? Asking. Some people here have never even held a pencil before. Happy birthday. But not everything here is unfamiliar. Happy birthday to Happy birthday. Little by little, they're figuring things out. Bassam hopes to find a job once his language skills improve. He says he'll do anything to support his family. No task is too difficult after you've escaped a war zone thousands of miles away and ended up in an unfamiliar country where you don't know anyone. She's saying like if she goes on her own, she might get lost even like if, it, if it's just the one block. <laughs> You'll hear them repeat something. Yeah, she's saying it doesn't rain as much in winter back home. Those two words, back home. That's what Syria is to them. Do you like to watch movies? But slowly, Seattle's starting to feel that way too. They're saying like they've been so lucky to have met so many nice people that they have become like brothers and sisters and family to them.